Good morning, my poor full MBP families. Good morning to each and every one of you with your powerful selves and your strength and your greatness and your total awesomeness. Again, today is Sabbath and happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. Um, <clears throat> hoping that wherever you are, as the weather changes back to the cooler weather where we are in New England, that wherever you are, there's some comfort in your soul as well, that you're finding peace and contentment regardless of all the ups and downs that this life offers. I'm hoping that you got up and moved today. Hope you got up and prayed today and gave thanks to God today for all things great and small. Don't forget that when you have a thankful heart, when you learn to appreciate then what you find is that the stress is lessened. Don't sit and worry about what you don't have, where you're going to get it from, how you're going to get it. Just be thankful and ask God to make a way. Remember, he is there and he listens and he sends the right people in our lives to fulfill our lives and to help make the load a little less heavy to carry by ourselves. So today, just give thanks. And I'm highlighting my soup today for this reason, guys. As we give thanks, I mean, I was at the computer. As you know, we're working on really, really making the um, <clears throat> the personalization of the T-shirts, uh, make it become a better reality. And as we work on it, um, I'm telling you, it, it is it is just a, a joyous moment for me. So for me personally, I have so much to be thankful for. Um, the young lady was here yesterday. She came with the children. She has two visitors straight from California. It was just funny to see one of them. She's in her sweat top and she says, it's so cold. <laughs> Because uh, I said, are you from Jamaica? You just came. She says, no, I'm in California. I said, okay, California is hot out there in the desert. So I totally understand. But beautiful young people. And my heart was so melted. Like um, Miss Val, she came and she, we, we went outside and she took some pictures of me wearing one of my productions. <laughs> and we had a good time out in the back trying to get the sun so she could get my face in a in a um in a you know in a nice way in a dark <laughs> um and so we had a good time out there because the sun was leaving because you know today the storm comes up the shore thank god we're not affected it's windy outside but the the bulk of the water and the flooding it stayed on the coast straight up into maine and we're good right now and I see the things that she did, the, the tags that she made. So the t-shirts will come with a little tag with the Miss Best Production thing on it. Um, the business cards are, she ordered them yesterday and and the, the labels are there. We picked out the little bags to put the shirts in to make them more, you know, like I am so uplifted. Um, I opened up the... <laughs> I got a business bank account now, so I was impressed this morning. My daughter, she reached out, um, the older twin. Mind you, the younger twin is the one who, when I was interested in a, in a website, like three years ago, that she says, Mommy, I'm not doing a website for you. You're going to create a website for yourself. And so she stayed in her house and she said, No, Mommy. You're sitting at the computer. I thought, I said, I thought you were coming over. She says, no, you're doing it on your own. And she called and we, I said at the computer, she told me what to click, what to open, what to do here, what to do there. It was awesome. So she is the, is the, is the pioneer right for that website. Um, even though I did it, it was under her guidance. So thank you, Judy Ann. And thank you, Joe. This morning, she walked me through... Um, getting the Zelle part of the account up and running. I thought I had to wait for the bank cards and stuff. She says, no, mommy. And she went and she told me she opened up and guided me and then sent the first monies to the business account. My God, 
Thank you, my daughters. Thank you so much. And God bless you. And, you know, just just asking God to open up doors for them, for their kindness and their goodness towards me and others in the, that they have come across in life. But now I want you to, guys, all of that is being said, but I want you to look at the peas in the soup. Okay, my husband got up. By the time I got out of bed, he was already in the kitchen. I heard him in the bathroom. And then I, the next thing I know, when I came to the kitchen, the pot was already on the stove. And he was grinding up garlic and stuff like that. And I said, oh, soup today is a great day for soup. And he said nothing because my husband is a man of few words. <laughs> a man of few words. You might think that Miss Bev, she can talk, but my husband is a man of few words. And I'm saying that to say this. These peas are coming straight from the garden. He planted these peas out there. He reaped them. He shelled them. I didn't even get a chance to shell one. And you notice that green peas, green beans or peas. And he used that this morning straight out of the garden to make us some pea soup. And I, I, I have to connect this to con a conversation my aunt and I had this morning. I called my aunt and she was like, Pitney, you, you must learn patience because I was just going to call you. And we talked and we the conversation got into marriage and how it is in life. We should never, ever marry to people who you love. You might love somebody, but they don't feel the same way about you per se. But somebody who loves you, will care for you, will do so much for you. Will there be perfections? As I said in life, nothing is perfect. No man is perfect. We're not going to find anybody who is perfect. I talk, even though I'm not like a public talker, but for me, I will get into a discussion and I will talk forever. You know, people in Jamaica who comes from my community, we get on the phone, we have so much in common and I will talk forever. Um, I want to know what's going on. I need to, you know, little things. And so I married to Danny and thank God, thank God, because a lot of people, they look at people and they feel like, well, I have a degree and... One girl, I remember somebody close who, when she got married, it was to a, a plumber. And she was so not happy with the fact that he was a plumber. She wanted a professional, somebody with a jacket and tie job. And so she said, Beverly, I don't know. He is so-and-so and he takes me to work and he doesn't. But he's a plumber, though. What do you think? I said, but does he love you? I said, the point is, is if he loves you, because if he loves you, he'll move mountains for you. It didn't work out though. They're gone their separate ways. I don't think it was because of him. I think it was because of her being ashamed to be part, be a part of him. But as I say to people, it's not about the jacket and tie. Even, I think it was the Thursday, I was having a conversation with somebody in my building. And I said something to her and she says, no, I said, are you mistress or are you mistress? She said, oh, miss. And she says, and I said, why are you just a miss? Why aren't you? And she says, maybe I'm too choosy. I said, that's the point. I said, when we look at people, don't look at people like over at the dress well, so I'm going to go out with that person. Because that person might be a pain in the behind. A lot of times you see these professionals and they're competitive and they put you down and they make you feel bad because they are in that position. While a simple, humble person with a trade or a skill who is there for you, we pass them by because they're not good enough. Oh, I have my degree. I couldn't marry to somebody like that. Well, I married to somebody like that. I married to somebody who is hardworking, who is respectful, who is willing to get up and make a pot of soup, who is willing 
to clean for me when he knows my knee hurts and my back hurts. He will do that. He gets up in the mornings. He works until 11. He gets up after 11 every night. But in the mornings when I have to get to work for 8, he's up dropping me off because he knows my fear of driving. So what if I had talked about, oh, no, I want somebody buttoned up. And, no, he's a welder by trade. That's who I met in Jamaica. I didn't meet a college graduate. and I met a welder by trade. I saw how he worked hard and I saw how his behavior towards females was different. He likes hardworking people. I work hard, but I'm a teacher. I get up in the mornings and even though I'm having the aches and pains, because I'm, thank God, I live to be this old to have aches and pains. And I'm like, oh my God, my back, oh my knee, oh my God, oh my God. But I'm still pushing out. I'm not curled up in bed not going to work, expecting him to do everything. I am out there regardless. And so I guess he appreciates that and I appreciate that he does, you know, he does sacrifice. Because he could have stayed in bed on the cold mornings. When he could stay in, in bed, he's up taking me to work. So I say again, my aunt said this morning, reminded me, she says, people need to remember to marry to people who love and appreciate them. Don't look at who you love because who you love may never love you back. Who you love might put you through so much ugliness because they know you're going to run, come back. No matter what you do, they're going to come back and, oh, I'm so sorry. You're going to be so sorry for everything they do. They cheat on you. You say, oh, you know what? I understand it's a mistake. I love you though. Mm. Cut it out. Cut it out. People need to love you back. You love them, but they need to love you back. And when they love you back, the respect will be there. They will go above and beyond for you. And even though you're not sitting lovey-dovey and they might not be the most romantic and all of that, but what would you prefer? Romance over respect? What would you prefer? Somebody who could plant peas and, and take care of it and have it, pick it, shell it, make soup for you on this cloudy, breezy day? Or somebody who is cute and probably out somewhere in the streets looking for the next victim to slay. So this is my happy Sabbath to you, everybody. Happy, happy Sabbath. Be blessed, be blessed. And as I say, respect is a bigger gift than love sometimes. Make it a great day by choice and know that I am here. We're working on the website. It will soon be released. I am thankful and grateful to God. I <clears throat> hope that what I am doing will motivate others to get up and do. There's enough out there for every one of us. Start something, do something. Yesterday when we were talking, uh, we were consulting. I'm going to call in professional terms now. When I was consulting with Miss Val, she also mentioned me doing some sweatshirts, some hoodies, so that, you know, people go into the gym, they're going, it's cold now. So I'm already looking to purchase some hoodies, some black hoodies, and to, and to personalize them with the look, with, with our, our thing. So guys, God is good and he puts people in your lives for different reasons and he move out people from your life for different reasons. Don't run after those who left. Embrace those who came in and work with the program. I am so thankful to this young lady. I just love her. I just so appreciate her. Because not only for what she's doing for me, but when she says to me, Miss Bev, your kindness means much. And so kindness begets kindness. We never know. And so let's just continue to do good. All right? So again, if you can be good, be careful, walk good, get up, make some soup, on this Sabbath day as we get ready for the fall weather. My throat already is telling me I know I'm going to be sick a day or two, but I'm trying to fight it away because each time the weather changes, guys, that's when Miss Bev gets <clears throat> whatever is out there. That's when I get it. So, pray me up, man. Pray me up, pray me up, pray me up so I can stay on my foot 
and whatever comes, me taking my vitamins, me taking my multivitamins, me taking my vitamin B12, me doing all of them stuff, me doing my uh, 100, my vitamin C100, trying to just keep my immune system up and out and afloat, you know, and so that I will be well through this winter. I love you guys. I respect you guys. You're my powerful f supporters. I thank you for all things great and small. And I just hope you will visit the website once it's released. And I let you know it's be it is released. I will post the link in a video or two or more so that you can continue. I want you to know this that somebody came to one of my videos this morning. And she brought tears to my eyes. She made me go back or he. I don't know what what what, <laughs> what gender the person is. But I did a video on they come with their anger. They come without empathy. And how what unfolded in my classroom a couple of days ago. And that person made me have to go back and watch the video. And the tears just were rolling down my face. So I want to thank you. Thank you, whoever you are. Thank you for stopping by the channel. Thank you for subscribing and for supporting. It is noted and appreciated. So all of you new subscribers, just know that you're in the right place. Please watch the videos and share them because I feel good when they mean something to, for, to, to, to someone. So thanks again. I had to pin your comment because it really touched my heart. I really had to go back and watch the video from beginning to end. So thanks to all of you new ones and all of you old ones who have been there and steadfast and just keep supporting me and being there for whatever it is I believe in. So love abounds forever because remember for all things, no matter what it is, no matter how great they were, the Lord tells us that regardless that love is the best, love conquers all else. So go out in love, people. Go out in peace. Go out there. Work hard. And if you can't work hard, speak the power of love and hard work into your young ones and teach them what empathy looks like, that they can understand what other people go through. All right. Much love always. Let's Tune in.